Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Janine Pirro. Thanks for being with us. Tonight, the IRS, Sebelius, Benghazi, and the power grid. But first, the Nevada ranch standoff where the feds have been battling local rancher Cliven Bundy in a struggle between a cattle rancher and the federal government. For more than a century, the Bundy family's cattle have grazed in the Nevada desert, earning them land use rights on public lands. But a federal judge has ordered them to pay grazing fees. This week, 200 armed federal agents surrounded Bundy's ranch and began deporting his cattle. They tased his son. They knocked down his sister, ostensibly to protect desert tortoise. The Bureau of Land Management, though, wasn't created until half a century after the Bundy family cattle started grazing there. A confrontation was ginned up this week as cattle ranchers, farmers, and self-described militia groups supporting Bundy swarmed the area. The protesters were then threatened by heavily armed federal agents. Joining me now, William Lajeunesse, who's live from Nevada. William, big developments today. Tell us what happened. Well, you know, Judge, this is not the result many of us expected. Uh, as of last night, with a conference call with the BLM, they were going strong. They were seizing his cattle, about 400. They had knocked down corrals, knocked down fences, taken out water tanks. And then this morning at 9 a.m., as people gathered behind me, the BLM abruptly said it was stopping operations. It was pulling out. That was unexpected. They said they were doing that for the safety of their own employees as well as the public. Because, of course, you mentioned those uh, confrontations earlier in the week. And, of course, we had a lot of our militia out here. And they said basically they were backing off. But there's one thing they didn't do. They didn't offer to give Clive Bundy back his cattle. Ah. And he stood there at 9 a.m. right after that. And he said, listen, I'm going to give them one hour. And if they don't give me back my cattle, we're going to go down to that corral and we're going to get them. And that's exactly what they did. And there was this huge confrontation on Interstate 15. Two to 300 protesters stopping traffic southbound. And then the highway patrol shows up, local police show up, and there is literally a confrontation. I will say an armed confrontation because some in law enforcement had their guns out and some on uh, with the private militia or rather the citizens militia, if you mm -hmm. will, they had their guns out as well. We have pictures of guys in a sniper position looking through their sights. Well, I'm it, not making it, it up, okay? It, you know, um, William, it seems that both sides were, were heavily armed. And, you know, for the feds to back off what they originally said, and, and I'm going to read a statement that they issued today. They say, today we announced the decision to conclude the cattle gather because of our grave concern about the safety of employees and members of the public. And they talk about safety being their number one priority and escalating tensions. But, you know, William, I, I have to ask you a more direct question. Um, do you think, William, that the feds blinked here? What I believe is they miscalculated and misjudged the response that was going to come down. So uh, some of the protesters went to get the cattle out. They, re they were rebuffed and the negotiation was taking place and indeed the BLM released the cattle again saying for uh, public safety reasons and then the cattle showed up down at the river about 30 minutes later all real happy uh, <laughs> so blinked I'm not sure uh, they probably did it and it was probably a very prudent decision on their behalf that they did. Right, and you can see the cows Good. coming home there uh, on our screen, William. But reports are that some of the cattle actually died. Is that true? I don't know that for a fact. I know that uh, I got that second hand that, uh, you know, when you're being herded up, and I think you're going to talk to Scott momentarily, he is a rancher, that when you have helicopters rounding up cattle during calving season and separating the females from the, the, the children, if you will, that it can be rather stressful on them, and I was told that some died, but I am not, I'm not personally aware of that. Yeah, interesting so. you say the, the, the females and the children. Um, but, 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 but let me try to get to what, what the core of this is. is. Is this really about tortoises, William? Well, I, I tell you what I think it is for a lot of the people here. Whether th These are a lot of rural people, and they have a lot of things in common, and I think they see their livelihood and their lifestyle 
um, threatened or under assault and some blame an overbearing federal government. So whether you're in the timber industry and you, they've been, the federal government been closing roads. You're in farming and you're worried about your pesticides and you can't use GMO. You know, in your ranching and they gotta say the cattle is gonna hurt the uh, Delhi sand fly or the pygmy owl or something like that. And so they have these things in common. At least that's one of the things I heard doing interviews today. Well, well but, but you so know, it's, it's kind of curious because in 1991, that same Bureau of Land Management, William, called for euthanizing the tortoises. And it's, it seems a kind of hypocritical that the same Bureau would now claim to protect them when they were resolved not that long ago to kill them. But, but let me move on from that. Did they really have a corral for the protesters where they had to stand? Yeah, there were uh, the, the BLM and they took this down within 24 hours because people laughed at them and they actually put up signs <laughs> saying the First Amendment cannot uh, is not an area, if you will. But they had like a 30 by 30 area with uh, the kind of um, uh, orange crime tape around it and said, this is your area where you're going to speak. And of course, these people totally ignored it. And after 24 hours, even the governor said that's laughable yeah. and they pulled it. All right, Judge. William, thanks so much. Joining me now, Bundy fa family friend Scott Hagman. Scott, are you there? Yes, I am. All right, Scott. How, can you tell us I'm, how I'm the I'm a fan Bundy of your show. I'm sorry. I'm a fan, big fan. Oh, thank show. you, thank you. How how was the Bundy family doing tonight? They're under a lot of stress, almost like kind of like shock in a way. They they've been through a lot. Um, the outcome today was a, a huge relief to them. Uh, so as you can imagine, they're trying to get some rest right now, and I'm, I'm just happen to be the one here speaking for him. Well, Scott, you know, I understand that you have been friends with this family for the better part of 20 years. Can you tell us a little about them? Yes. Uh, Cliven's just been a hard-working man. He's raised some good boys. They, uh, they're just good men. They're good Americans. They're just normal, good men. Cliven started out in this, and we did this in 93 also, uh, and we won that time. What did you do too, in 93, Scott? We, got, we left the cattle out here. They tried to gather the cattle before. Right. Um, so he's been, he's been down this road before. What he came to was a hard spot. He believes that it's wrong what's going on. What's going on is wrong. It's just wrong and he would not sit down. He stood up then, he stood up for over 20 years now. He's never backed down, his boys have never backed down, I'm proud of all of them, and they brought this solution to this head now that we can have this discussion um, and move forward here. And he set an example for all of us that if good men just stand up and remain standing, we can change a lot of things in, in the federal government. The federal government right now is just out of control. Why do you think, Scott, that the federal government is even doing this? There, there could be a lot of political reasons and uh, absolute power corrupts absolutely. When the, the people in these boards, they're untouchable. They work for the government. They, they're really hard to deal with. They believe that they own the ground and they're, they're able to manage us for the best result of their ground. It's not the public's ground anymore. It becomes their ground, and it just gets out of control. Well, the, the whole introduction of the turtles and everything was just ridiculous. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if you heard me earlier, but in 1991, though, the Bureau of Land Management said we need to kill them all, and now it's an excuse to get these cattle off the land. But, but is, is, is um, Clive and Bundy seen as a hero there now? Yes, he is. He should be a hero to everyone. He's a common man who stood up, stood for what was right, and never sat down. And he believes he, he, what he's doing is right, and he's moving forward. And, you know, and he so has to feel good about the fact that so many people just picked up and went out there. And, you know, it's not good that you've got the feds who are heavily armed and, and the militia or the friends or the ranchers heavily armed, literally snipers aiming at each other. But there, he has to get a sense that, you know, there's a certain part of America that agrees in the hard work of the men and women who are cattle ranchers and farmers and the people who have, you know, grazed, uh, had their cattle grazed on the land for centuries. Yes. You know, it's, as Ammon said, um, 
uh, Cliven's son, Ammon said, can you believe, he asked me, can you believe that we were staring down assault rifles yeah. from our federal BLM land people? We were literally staring down assault rifles. And we moved forward on them and pressed them in, in order to make them come to a different conclusion. So last question very quickly, Scott, what's next for the Bundy family? Uh, I hope they get some good rest. <laughs> I, I know that th there's a lot of people out there praying for them. Um, they need strength right now and they need some good representation <laughs> uh, as far as how they're going to be able to keep their cattle and, and, and get right with the government and or not right with the government but right with the county and right with the, their neighbors here in Clark County. That's All what they right, need to Scott. Do, and that's what they intend on doing. All right, uh, Scott, you know, you, you really have to give him a lot of credit. He's been uh, under the gun, so to speak, for more than 20 years on this. Uh, Scott, thanks so much for being with us tonight. Thank you. All Thank right. You. And coming up, the learned Lois Lerner held in contempt. Could she finally be forced to face the music and vote on tonight's Instapol? Who should we deport from Nevada, cattle or illegals? Facebook or tweet me at Judge Janine. We'll read your answers later in the show. Rolling, 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 rolling.